Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Bethany Congregational Church on this beautiful Mother's Day. And we're going to be celebrating all the mothers here today. If you're a first-time visitor, we'd like to say welcome and um, thank you for joining us. And the same goes for those that are watching on Facebook and uh, Zoom. Today is a combined service for the uh, English and Japanese congregation. And so it's special and it's always a blessing to that we can uh, uh, worship together. Today we celebrate all moms, mothers and the mothers that have gone before us, the mothers to be, uh, grandmothers, aunts, spiritual mothers, mentors, women that are just serving in the community. In a nutshell, women who make, make a difference in someone's lives. Women who are just there to lend a listening ear and a word of encouragement. Being a mother and being a mother is a, and be, being a mother and, being a mother is a blessing and being a spiritual mother or mentor to someone is a blessing as well. It's a beautiful gift from God. You know, being a mother is one of the hardest jobs, I think, uh, just raising children and not knowing exactly uh, what to do in certain situations. But Proverbs 31:25 says, even in times of stress, a mother's strength helps her smile in whatever comes her way. And I love this, um, this scripture from Proverbs 31, 30. And this keeps, us, this keeps us in check, girls. It says, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. So there's so many encouraging scriptures um, in the Bible for us women. And uh, we just thank the Lord for his holy scriptures that guide us and speak to us. And in a little, and later on in a little while, we're going to hear from our own Jan Burwell about motherhood. <laughs> okay. Um, on to announcements. Today we're going to have our um, Mother's Day luncheon right after the worship service. So all are, all are welcome. Uh, there's no Japanese class today, and there won't be any on uh, Sunday the 28th. That's a Memorial Day weekend, so we're taking off. Um, May 28th is Pentecost. Um, the June 4th is a missions march for the Ramabai Mufti mission. And... I think that is it. Does anyone else have any announcements or prayer requests or praise reports? Okay, let's go on to the next thing. Um, if, um, yeah, so some of us will be um, available after the worship service if you would like us to pray privately for you. So. Today, do I, do I? Sorry about that. I should know this by now. <laughs> Today, we will be praying for our missionaries, G Jews for Jesus. And Jews for Jesus exists to support Jewish people as well as other followers of Jesus um, to explore. Uh, to um, explore life with faith in Jesus. And they have offices all over the world in which they minister to the Jewish community and offer spiritual support in their journey with Christ. Um, we had an urgent kind of prayer request from them, right, Pastor? Um, 
Yes. So I'll read it. Okay. I'm sorry. I know the 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 crisis that's going on in the Gaza Strip, and yeah. So they asked us to pray. The uh, this is a request from um, Eli Birnbaum, the uh, Jews for Jesus Israel director, and he asks. In the last few days, the conflict in the Gaza Strip has escalated, and many are spending nights in bomb shelters, and we have been told to prepare for a few days of fighting. Around midday yesterday, in Tel Aviv, sirens went off, and we were asked to pick up our kids from school. As always, the situation raises levels of fear and anxiety and uncertainty. So please keep us in your prayers and pray for quiet days and nights for all in Gaza and Israel. We hope that as many lives as possible are spared during this time. So let's keep them in our prayers. Okay. Okay. Okay, let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this beautiful day in which we celebrate all women this Mother's Day. And we pray that our worship service to you be pleasing in your sight. And Lord, we, we just pray for uh, healing for those that need your physical touch as well as mentally and emotionally and to comfort those who have lost loved ones. We think about Fumio and Tammy Roman and how you have been healing them. Um, and you continue to give them strength every day, Lord. And we thank you for that. And we pray for Bobby and Aly Alyssa Carmahone and Aaron Gray, John Slago, Linda's niece, Andrea, Tsugumi's husband, Rick, and her friends, Mike, Rick, and Tammy, Lloyd Henning, Barbara Fukuzawa, Maurice, Gordon's sister, Nora, Haru Sugino, Marge Smith, Monique, and other people in our lives, Lord, that need your healing touch. And then we also pray for peace in Ukraine, Syria, in Afghanistan and now on the Gaza Strip and Israel, Lord. Father, we lift up our missionaries, Jews for Jesus, as they plant seeds for the Jewish people and others, and may their ministry be fruitful for your kingdom. Thank you, Father, for how you watch over our church, Bethany, and bless all those who serve here. And Father, we pray for more Sunday school teachers, more people to serve on the praise and worship team, and effective outreach programs to bring people into our Bethany family so that they may come to know you as their Lord and Savior. Father, there's so much to pray for in this world we live in now. And we see and hear about all the crazy things taking place, but you know the big picture. You are in control, so we trust in you, and our hope is in you. We also bring to you our prodigal sons and daughters. Lord, please bring them back to you. And we pray over our tithes and offerings. You have blessed us with so much as a church and in our individual lives, and may we give back to you as an act of worship and use it to glorify your name. And as Pastor Chuck brings forth your message, may we hear what your spirit has to say to us. So we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, can you briefly greet each other as the praise and worship team comes up? sound out here was fine, but Alexi said it was staticky on his end. So. Yeah. Don't. 
Happy Mother's Day, and as, as Denise shared, we honor all the women today because all of you Christian women are either mothers, sisters, or daughters to us. And so if you can stand and join us, we're going to teach you a new song, uh, the Lord's Prayer. I think you all know the Lord's Prayer, but you may not know this new song version from the Lord's Prayer, and we're just going to teach you real quick what the verse and the chorus and the bridge sound like and then we'll sing it together so first of all the bridge or sorry the verse sounds like this father let your kingdom come father let your will be goes like this. It's yours, it's yours, all yours, all yours, the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours. It's yours, it's yours, all yours, all yours, forever and ever, the kingdom. Have you heard it on the radio? <clears throat> okay, let's sing the Lord's Prayer. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in Let your kingdom come, Father, let your will be done, on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us, forgive us, as we forgive the ones who sinned against us, forgive them. Deliver us from the evil one. Let your kingdom come. First again. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven. Right here in my heart. Father, Father let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. Deliver us from the evil. 
Sometimes moms feel a little un unappreciated, and maybe these words will fit some moms who are tired and struggling. But God says you are special. Every 
don't believe the evil one, you are loved. And if you are struggling in which way to go, be assured that God will make a way. Sing through in Japanese and then in English. Thank you, Lord, for promising to make our paths straight when we lean on you and not on our own understanding. Lord, I pray that each person here would have that peace of mind, that you are going before them and that you will make their paths straight and that you will hold them up when they're falling down and that you will love them when they feel unloved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Our scripture reading today is from 1 Timothy 5, 
verses 1 through 2, and Romans 16, verse 13. 1 Timothy 5, 1 to 2. Do not rebuke an older man, but encourage him as you would a father. Younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, younger women as sisters in all purity. Romans 16, 13 says, Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, also his mother who has been a mother to me as well. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Okay, I'm, I'm just the preliminary, and the, the main speaker will be coming after me. I'll share a short message, and then Jan's going to share a testimony and then I'll wrap up with a conclusion. <clears throat> Mother's Day, as you may know, is a secular holiday started way back in 1908, but it became a national holiday in 1914, and it's seen as the third largest day for church turnout after Christmas and Easter. So churches have celebrated Mother's Day in a big way for many, many years. And one thing I know is every person here has a mother, right? Anybody here that did not have a mother? Okay. But, but not all women are mothers, and that's why we honor all the women in the church. I did a little research that currently, as of last year, all women age 44 and above, 86% had had at least one child, which is about... Ten, the, uh, 10 years before that, it was only 76% of women. So actually, more women are having children. But some women choose to stay single. Some women desire to be married and have children and not able to have children. Some people have had mothers who were abusive. And so for some people, Mother's Day can be a, a painful day. And so for, for those who it's a painful day, I just wanted to share a verse. Uh, well, before I, I forgot to give you my humor verse. And, uh, human resources, one vacation day a year, that's all I get. She's applying for her mother job. We call it Mother's Day, but technically you still have to work. Um, but for the people who, who Mother's Day is uh, difficult, um, I thought of this verse from Lamentations, but this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. So the Lord's love never ceases for any of you, and we can't judge God's love based on circumstances or whether our prayers are being answered the way we want, because God showed that he loved us and that Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us, and so we know that God loves us. He loves every one of the women out there, even if they are desiring children and have not yet been able to have children. And if you're in that category, I would say, please tell the elders so we can pray for you. I prayed for many women over the years that wanted to have children, and almost all of them have eventually been able to have children. So please let us know so we can pray for you if you're in that situation. But I wanted to share briefly from those verses about Paul. You know, Paul was not married, so Paul did not have children. And I don't think Paul ever talks about his mother in the Bible. But he talks about a lady who was a mother to him. Now, in Timothy, he wrote, Paul wrote to uh, Timothy, who was a younger pastor. And he said, 
let's see. Do not rebuke an older man, but encourage him as you would a father. Younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, younger women as sisters in all purity. And so it, Timothy was younger, so he, he put it to him as uh, fathers and sisters. But if you're older like me, then that means treat the younger ones as sons and daughters. And so for me, I have mothers here. You know, I think of Barbara and Bobby as my West Coast mothers and many of you are my sisters out there and then people like Yurika and Natsuki and Mariko I see as my daughters and so we all have wonderful family right here and anywhere you go any church you go to you've got mothers brothers fathers sisters sons and daughters and that's that's one of the beauties of being a part of God's family and so Paul is talking to uh, Timothy. And then in uh, the book of uh, Romans, <clears throat> this is the first time that I've come across this and, and studied about this, but Romans 16 is not a chapter that a lot of pastors preach on because it's Paul's greetings to 24 different people in Rome. And about six of them are women and some of these women are married, some are single, some have children, some don't. But Paul greets one, and he says, Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, also his mother, who's been a mother to me as well. So did a little bit of study about this uh, Rufus and his mother. And it's interesting to think about First of all, why, why Paul says that she was a mother to him? What, what did she do that made him feel like she was a mother to him? Now, I have a feeling that probably she must have fed him and housed him at some point along the way. And he probably received unconditional love from her because Paul was greatly persecuted wherever he went. So, doing a little research, there's another mention of Rufus in the book of Mark. Now, John Mark wrote the book of Mark, and scholars believe that he was in Rome, writing to people in Rome, and Paul was not yet in Rome. Paul was writing to people in Rome. Paul had never been to Rome, but he knew 24 people that were in Rome, believers that were in Rome and so Christians in those days moved around a lot just like they do now and so he says to greet Rufus um, oh sorry I skipped a verse here oh well he says greet Rufus and so then in Mark it says uh, they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. So you remember when Jesus had been whipped and beaten and was carrying the cross to where he would be crucified, and he kept falling down, and so the Roman soldiers pulled Siren, uh, Simon from Cyrene out of the crowd and made him carry Jesus's cross. Now Mark says Simon of Cyrene was the father of Alexander and Rufus. Now he wouldn't just mention Alexander and Rufus unless people knew Alexander and Rufus because you know Peter's kids are never named. I mean, there's hardly any of the people in the New Testament do they name their children. But he mentions Alexander and Rufus, so they must be believers that are well-known in Rome. And so I just wanted to give you a little history and geography lesson here. Uh, there's my pointer. Okay, so Mark says that Simon was of Cyrene. Cyrene's down here in present-day Libya, Africa. And so at the Passover, when Jesus was being crucified, Simon 
had gone from Cyrene over here to Israel. And so Simon is in Israel during the crucifixion. And then in the book of Acts, it says, do you remember Paul became a believer and on the road to Damascus, and then he came back to Jerusalem and he was telling all the people that Jesus is the Messiah and he's arguing with the Jews and it got so contentious that the believers sent Paul back to Tarsus. And then Barnabas brought Tarsus over to Antioch. Now, why do I mention all of that? Well, in Antioch, in the book of Acts, it says that one of the believers there that was in the church in Antioch was Simeon, the also called Niger. Niger means dark-skinned. And so probably that Simeon is the same Simon from Cyrene. So at some point, he became a believer and went to Antioch also. And so Simon and Paul knew each other in Antioch. And Simon's wife, mother of Rufus, was like a mother to Paul. So I just thought it was kind of cool that it's very possible. This can't be proved. This is all kind of speculation. But as I said, very rarely do they mention the children's names of believers unless those, believer, those children are also believers that are well-known in the Christian community. And so at some point, Rufus and Alexander, the children, ended up way over here in Rome. And <clears throat> I just thought it was neat that the guy who carried Jesus' cross was married to someone who became like a mother to Paul in Antioch. I mean, that's very possible the way that all worked out. And it's just an example of how God works in amazing, mysterious ways to bring people together and also how we are all part of a big family. And so I want to turn it over to my lovely wife now and let her share about what it was like being a mother and a missionary. And then I will conclude with a few uh, application points. Okay. Okay. I think <laughs> you all know that I'm the talker in our family, not the speaker. So <laughs> bear with me. <laughs> but when I was asked to say something about motherhood, I really had to take some time to think about it. And I wonder if any of you mothers have really, or fathers, men, have really thought what motherhood is and what it all means. And if you're a mother, you probably haven't had the time to think about it. But I was given the privilege of having to really think about this. And in my mind, I believe motherhood is a priceless miracle of God. And the reason I think that is because when I was a college student, maybe 18 or 19 years old, a doctor told me, you will never have children. That's a really hard thing to hear when you're a young woman and all I ever wanted to be was a wife and a mother. And to hear that was devastating. Well, um, fast forward a few years. Um, God blessed me in the first area of becoming a wife at 24. 
when Chuck and I got married. And we got married and, and immediately almost moved to California and decided, you know, I think we should wait maybe five years before we have kids. And that way we can travel, we can explore California, we can do some fun things, I can work, and um, we can just really get established. Well, that was our thinking, but um, it didn't happen that way. And it wasn't until seven years and three miscarriages and still not having children that God did finally bless us with our daughter, Melissa, and our son, Nick, <laughs> um, three and a half years later. And you know, God blessed us even before Chuck and I ever had a relationship with him, which speaks to how, how wonderful God is. And it wasn't until four years later that Chuck and I did step into that relationship with the Lord. And you all know shortly after that, he led us to Japan, um, where parenting and mothering was definitely a challenge. As we all studied Japanese and learned about a new culture, I not only cared for the house and all the household that all that entails, I was also the principal at the missionary kids school for several years. And the whole 12 years our kids were in school there, I helped out one day a week at school and that was about a two hour commute. Um, I taught English classes to Japanese women at least two times a week, began playing the piano at church, helped with outreaches, and continued to study Japanese, as well as complete our monthly paperwork um, that was required by our, by our mission agency. So in the midst of all that busyness, I decided early on that when our kids got home from school, which was usually around four o'clock or so, I would drop all those things and give them my full attention. That was often playing tennis or playing games or helping them with homework or doing whatever they wanted to do. Our kids, however, often thought that my main job as a mom was to embarrass them. <laughs> and that took a lot of forms in Japan, I tell you that right now. <laughs> um, and there are so many stories. Anyways, back then, we had to only, only use cash when we went shopping. There were weren't credit cards, no checks. So we always tried to make sure we carried as much cash that we thought we would need. Well, have you ever tried to go shopping and predict how much money you're gonna need by the time you get to the cash register? Well, I had embarrassed both Nick and Melissa so many times with not having enough cash and sending them to put stuff back that they, they started not even going to the cash register with me. They would go to the store, but not to the cash register. I thought that was kind of funny because in our city of about 180,000, we were the only foreigners with children. So did they really think that I wasn't their mom? I mean, that's, that's just one thought. <laughs> so, and then I know Chuck has shared this little incident with you. Um, another time when Nick and I, <clears throat> just the two of us were, were out shopping. And as you know, I'm trying to control my arms now, but as you know, I usually get quite elaborate with my hands and on my arms when I'm talking. And we were just walking together 
in the store and I was doing something, describing something with my arms. Right when a lady walked by and my arm hooked her purse and took it right off her shoulder. And I was there standing with this woman's purse in total shock. Nick is in total embarrassment. This lady looked at me, well, I can't even describe it because I'm sure she has seen all those American movies, you know, with stealing and purse snatching and all the crimes that go with it. And I was, I'm profusely bowing and apologizing and, and handing her purse back to her. And um, I'm not sure she really believed it was an accident. But um, I think it was at that point that Nick decided from then on he would only go with his dad shopping. So, um, and if you're a parent, a mom, I know you have stories too about how you've embarrassed your children. And if you don't, I know your kids will. So just if you're brave enough, you can ask them. Don't ask Nick though. <laughs> he can fill you in a lot. But, but now our children are adults and parents in their own right. And it often does my heart good when Melissa says to me, Mom, parenting is hard. She's finally getting it. She's understanding the responsibilities of motherhood and the difficulties of it and the amount of work that it all involves. So I would just like to share a few lessons I've learned in my 42 years of being a mom. Love unconditionally. Make sure they know that you may not always like their actions, but you will always love them the same way that Christ loves us. Listen well. Be ready to listen with undivided attention, putting down all the devices when they want to talk. Because I can almost guarantee you there'll be a time when they won't want to talk. And then cherish the everyday moments in each stage of growth they're in. Because you never know when it may be the last time they they do something such as letting you give them a big hug when you take them to school or even walking them to school anymore or tucking them in bed and being told a bedtime story. You get the picture. Those last moments are there. And I've even started facing these times with our grandkids. I often think if I just had that one more time to do that with them, I would have cherished it so much more. And you don't ever stop being a mom. Chuck and I had kind of had this idea, oh, when they turn 18 or 21, they're adults, they're, they're gone, they're on their own, so we're done with our job. Well, that isn't the case. What I wouldn't give to have another conversation with my own mom. I cherish those phone calls, especially when we were in Japan. And she was always my cheerleader and always thought I was great no matter how down I might be feeling. And now it's our turn to be the cheerleader. So remember that we're always the mom. We're always gonna be there for them. Another lesson I learned is don't hold too tight 
give them responsibilities and freedom to make mistakes. This is part, all part of the process of maturing. Let them make decisions, even if it's not the one you would have chosen for them, but let them make the choice and discover the consequences or the successes or the failures. And tell them often how proud you are of them and how loved they are by you and by God. Make sure your children know that God is number one in your life, your spouse is number two, and your children are number three. It's so easy to let work, ministry, busyness squeeze out our time with our children. I know because I really failed in this area quite often. In 1 Peter 3, 4, it says, let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. We are to be examples of Christ's unconditional love with our children. Our beauty comes from a gentle and quiet spirit, which is precious in God's sight. Of course, we know there's always those times of frustration, loss of patience, anger, and just plain exhaustion. During those times, we need to take a breath. We often need to ex excuse ourselves from the room and say a prayer for strength and discernment and then face the situation with a renewed attitude. So many years after our kids were out of the house, once again, I saw a doctor and he said to me, you know, it's a miracle you ever had children. He was right. Children are a miracle, a special gift from God. This is what makes motherhood a miracle and a precious gift from God. And you know that as has been mentioned earlier today, motherhood comes in many forms. A mother through adoption, becoming a stepmom, being a teacher, being a godmother, being a discipler, or a coach to someone. No matter what our age, there is always someone younger than, than we are who needs advice, a word of encouragement, a helping hand, a break from watching the kids, or training in something like cooking or organizing or planning men menus, or even shopping for them. Mothers do all these things, but others can help out and have a huge impact on the children. If your mother is living, thank her for the job that is so important to God. If she's not, thank another woman who's doing that job of just being a mom. Please enjoy the day. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Jan. Uh, um, I just want to summarize some of what we both shared. We all have a mother, so of course, thank the Lord for your mother. And if your mother's still alive, be sure to thank her today for all that she did for you. And there, there's insert in your bulletin 
with these notes. But as Jan said, having children is a miracle of the Lord. So if you have children, thank the Lord for that miracle. And pray for the mothers of young children. They are often tired and feeling unappreciated or they're just stressed. Tell them you're praying for them and thank them for their hard work in raising children. Um, <clears throat> our own Pastor Matico has had quite a weekend with her children. Erica had an allergic reaction yesterday and Hibiki woke up with a fever and she's been, she's been a stressed mom. And uh, moms, young moms like that need our prayers. Pray for those who want children but haven't yet been able to. To those who are over 45 or 50, consider being a mentor or a friend, uh, coach to a young mother. And to the men, give your wives and daughters a break. Um, I'm proud of my son. Uh, he's giving his wife a break today. That's why she's not here. She's off with her girlfriends, enjoying the day and relaxing. And he's doing a better job than I used to think if I did one meal for Jan that I was giving her a break for the day. So <laughs> rarely did I give her a whole day. But she, she did w go to a few uh, women's retreats in Japan. That was about the only real break. And honor all the women in the church. So... As you greet one another, you know, greet them as your mothers, your sisters, your daughters, or your grand grandchildren today. And let's celebrate the family that we have together as we celebrate our moms. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for the miracle of motherhood, of childbirth, the miracle of creation, the miracle of salvation. Thank you, Lord for blessing us, and Lord, we just pray that each of the women today would feel your special love and joy and peace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, if the praise team can come up and join me, we will sing our last song. singing hymn 536. It's in the hymnals or it's also on the uh, screens. Happy the home where God is there.
our doxology today is the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. steadfast love of the Lord truly never does cease. So may the love of God and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today and forevermore. Amen. All right. Well, some of the men uh, not in here are out preparing lunch. And so I think we go straight out through the fellowship hall to pick up your lunch and then we'll eat in the Koinonia Hall.